Good morning to all. Today we are going to discuss about the transceiver design considerations in wireless sensor networks in a physical layer in uh, unit two, that is sensor networks introduction and architecture. So the first and foremost thing we are going for design considerations is energy profile. So there will be more number of issues we have discussed in the last class. Based on that, we have identified these are these should be the considerations. One should be the energy usage profile. The second one should be the choice of modulation scheme. Third one should be the dynamic modulation scaling. And the fourth one should be the antenna considerations. So while going for your energy usage profile, your transceiver consumes more energy sometimes uh, while radiating. So the transceiver working at frequencies beyond one gigahertz takes some 10 to 100 milliwatt of radio power. Um, it also going will be considering considering based on the data rate in which the data go, is going to transmit it. So for your uh, 2.4 gigahertz transceiver, a radiated power of 0 dBm. Actually, it radiates only 32 milliwatt, whereas the receiver uses even more 38 milliwatt. So the radiated energy should be corresponding to a very low value of 1 milliwatt. So it also depends on the type of the devices which we are going to use. The energy consumption also depends on the type of your device. So the wireless device like mobile phones or laptops will be uh, having consuming different types of energy. That, that is the case while going for your energy usage profile. Second important consideration while going for the transmitting power are uh, based on the time consumption. So some of the applications will be requiring more um, amount of time for transmission and reception. But some will be requiring always it should be in on condition. That is 24 hours it should have to function. That also one of the key observation while going for your energy usage. So some nodes will be going for an asleep state and after some time it will be going to the active state. In that cases, your energy usage should be very much lower. So that it will be again the second, import, second foremost consideration while going for your energy usage profile. To reduce your average power consumption in a low traffic wireless sensor network, you have to keep your transceiver in the ideal mode all the time uh, would consume significant amount of energy. The third key observation is the communication part. So communication part and the, is nothing but your bit error requirements, range that is nothing the distance and the transceiver type you have chosen. So that also coming under your consideration of your uh, energy usage profile. So it depends on the type of the protocol, type of the MAC protocol you have used. So the MAC protocol only schedule the transceiver operational stage. It should be in active or it should be in this mode. So the bit error requirements. So example, we can say by communicating with a shorter distance. For example, if you are sharing an information with the help of a Bluetooth, the losses will be less. But if you are sharing an internet over a a large uh, equipment, there will be some uh, more number of losses. So that also it will be taken into account while going for your energy usage profile. So that second consideration is choice of modulation scheme. So the choice of the modulation scheme depends on the desirable data rate and the symbol rate, the implementation complexity, the relationship between the radiated power and the target bit error rate and the expected channel characteristics. So a very crucial point is nothing but the choice of modulation scheme. So the foremost observation is higher the data rate offered by the transceiver, smaller the time needed to transmit a given amount of data. So smaller energy will be consumed here. To maximize the time a receiver can spend in speed mode, the trans transmit time should be minimized. Okay, so that uh, by the transceiver depends on the data range. That is the first consideration. Second consideration is power consumption of the modulation scheme. So power consumption of the modulation scheme also depends on the symbol.
normal rate rather than your data rate. So the power consumption depends on the high data rate. So obviously it will be desired for high data rate at low symbol rate. So most important thing is MRA modulation scheme provides this choice of modulation scheme. So MRA modulation scheme will be working on with a high data rate and low symbol rate. So faster mode is complementary code keying modulation scheme. Complementary code keying that is called as CCX, CCK modes consuming more energy than DBPSK and DQPSK. That is your differential binary uh, phase shift keying and differential quaternary phase shift keying. Dynamic method important criteria is dynamic modulation scaling. So it is interesting to consider uh, uh, the methods to adapt the modulation scheme in the current situation. So for dynamic, from the name itself, we can say we are going for, for certain application for a BPSK means for summer application we are using for quadrature amplitude modulation. So it depends on the type of application. So most cases for MRA QAM, a target bit error rate of 10 power minus 5, a model have been developed that uses the symbol rate with B and M number of possible symbols. Uh, it should be clearly the bit delay and the energy per bit decreases for increasing B and M. So the energy per bit depends on your number of symbols than on your symbol rate. So if you are using a less number of symbol rate, for less number of symbol rate, for uh, you will be using in quaternary two symbols per bit. For a data to transmit, we are going to consider two bits as a symbol. But binary, one bit as a symbol. If you are increasing the number, if you are increasing the number, that is symbol rate. So that means we can go for 4 QAM, 8 QAM, 16 QAM. If you are going to increase that, then your dynamic modulation scaling will, uh, will be giving a better performance in your transceiver design. Then the fourth criteria is antenna considerations. So the antenna considerations are uh, mainly it, the applications such as agricultural field will be uh, requiring this major thing. So the desired small form factor of the overall sensor nodes restricts the size and the number of antennas. If the antenna is much smaller than the carrier wavelength, it is hard to achieve good antenna efficiency. So that is a small size antennas, one must spend more transmit energy to obtain some radiated energy. So small size antennas will be uh, requiring very complex design considerations. Secondly, with small sensor node cases, it will be hard to place two antennas with suitable distance to achieve the received diversity. So that is another one important thing we have will be considering while going for. So this antenna considerations will depends on the type of application. Again, it will be depending on the type of application. So for disaster relief, uh, healthcare, outdoor environment, then you are a practicing physician who is going for a, giving a healthcare, then you are a local doctor. All will be having this connected with the another one device. But the antenna size used in the transmitter and the receiver is not the same. So the radio waves emitted from an antenna close to the ground, typical some applications are faced with higher path loss. So only we are, it will be different for the certain application. So the, these are the four important design considerations while going for the transceiver. But the foremost thing is your energy profile Second thing is your modulation scheme. Third thing is your dynamic modulation scaling. And the fourth one is the antenna considerations. Thank you.